one can see in the back, there was a WLCCP packet showing up. Uh, there has uh, somehow changed. Uh, you did, uh, uh, most certainly you did not notice this. Uh, the, the MAC address of the sender has um, changed and the, the packets are SCM advertisements where SCM st st stands for uh, subcontext, um, uh, which is a certain, say, structure in the overall WLCCP picture. What is interesting is that uh, once this is performed, uh, the role of the WDS master has changed. Uh, it has been a dot .10 before, and now it's a dot .222. Uh, so say a rogue party coming in, just announcing packets, and I mean how many lines of code is the tool, Daniel? About 200. 200 lines of code. Uh, means uh, the, uh, up to that point, current uh, WDS master doesn't serve its role anymore, which at this point of the development of the tool has a denial of service impact. Um, uh, now, th uh, this access point tries to uh, undergo leap authentication with the WDS master, which is Daniel's laptop, uh, which doesn't provide leap authentication. But again, um, this is a first proof of concept that the uh, concept of um, a priority-based uh, election of somehow important infrastructure devices might not be the best idea without, say, any authentication um, at that point of uh, time. Uh, okay, again, we are going to switch speakers. Um, we have another uh, demo prepared. Um, remember, there's two parts within WLCCP that were of particular interest. First, uh, the master selection process. This. Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, but it should kind, be. kind of on a handy with one. You hear me? Yeah, great. So, um, I mean, the second part of uh, WLCCP, which is uh, interesting, is what we call the. Uh, intra-IP communication because um, there's this uh, WDS master which does all the controlling and management and there are the, uh, I'll call it them slave access points because they're just doing, uh, they're doing the real wireless stuff but they're in, from a management view, they are just slaves. Um, and uh, I told you they are authenticated. There's some special infra of infrastructure authentication method involved um, which is called LEAP, uh, like uh, Lightweight EAP. It's a Cisco property protocol, and remember, I mean, uh, I think it was uh, in the end of 2005, Joshua Wright gave a talk at, I, I, mean, I think this was DEF CON, right? No, I, I, I think, uh, did Joshua give his, uh, when did he release as LEAP? Was it as smooth? Was it? A I think it was as smooth. It's more, or somehow. Uh, in 2005, he showed LEAP is um, basically the, is, is basing on a challenge response mechanism. And um, then you have some, let's say, some, uh, some encryption key which is too short and revealing some bytes and so on. The overall picture is you can, if you have a, a, a sufficient large uh, word book, you can break uh, authentication based on leave within seconds. This is, I mean, you're doing infrastructure authentication and you're able to, do, to break it within short time, which is, Think about building up trust with a broken mechanism. This is it. And um, so we thought about uh, how should this work in a secure manner? Is it possible in any way to do it in a secure manner? Um, if you read the uh, patent application, Cisco says, oh, hey, we know Cisco Leap is insecure and somehow it's related to password strength and all that stuff. So um, we do use another key. We introduce another key for encryption and authentication, with, which does is not leap, but um, uh, somehow, if you look at the key derivation, I will show it to you in a moment. The key is, or the the key which is derived by leap is somehow involved in the new key generation mechanism. So this is like uh, building building a house on sand. 
it, it will drown it uh, some time. So which, uh, this, this is where we think about, hey, with, you're doing infrastructure authentication, you're trying to build up trust and you do it on broken mechanisms and you, try and you say, oh, we are secure because we have a separate encryption key, but it's all based on an insecure mechanism. And uh, it was about to say, let's prove, uh, say like, let's prove that it's really insecure, that it's hackable. And it uh, took some time. Uh, what happens in the background is just a normal leap authentication as you would have it uh, within, uh, let's say, a wireless n uh, network protected with leap. And so you ha have a look at the packet, you dissect the packets and all that stuff, and then you can just take, you just take that data out of it, uh, put it into ASLeap, and ASLeap gives you the password, um, which was used for authentication. And that password is really, this is important. Um, because of the password, there is this uh, so-called network session key derived. The se network session key is the keying material, which uh, would also be used if you have leap in a wireless environment. And then they say, okay, now we do a new key derivation, the context transfer key, uh, which is for encrypting and authentication critical data like pairwise master keys we transfer between the different APs. And um, if you look at the uh, on the key derivation scheme, it's totally easy. The, the, the so-called PIF function is uh, the same key generation function which is used in, within wireless. It's a standard function. The function is okay. The function is secure. You just, uh, what, you, what this function, function essentially do is an HMAC SHA1. And you have some input data. Uh, the input data is some, somehow, um, of course, the so-called network session key. Um, for the HMAC, and um, there's some, let's say they just put it all together to a string and then derive the key on it. There's some string called S1, EN to EA, link context, uh, link context and fair key derivation, which is just some random string. And then they have these IDs um, for the access point who is just authenticating and the, and the authenticator, which is uh, the uh, WDS master. And then these two devices just exchange a nonce between each other. This is all. And uh, you just take all that data, put it in the PRF function, and you get a context transfer key. And you take that key, which is with HMAC based on the already broken leap key, and uh, encrypt and authenticate data with it. Honestly, this is insecure. This is where we say this is a bad protocol design. Because it's known that leap is insecure and that you can break it. And I mean, the funny thing, this, I mean, if you look at it on the market, this, this infrastructure was sold around 2005, then, and Cisco was already aware of leap vulnerabilities, um, but, they, but they did it, they just did it. So how could a practical attack be? The first thing is you need to be, get access to that, we call it wired, backbone of, uh, of the APs, uh, which is just uh, uh, the distribution set where all this uh, communication takes place. So the easiest thing might be just find an access point, pull out the cable, and connect your notebook to it, which uh, I guess will work in all, nearly every um, deployment. So the next thing is identifying which uh, devices are capable of speaking uh, WLCCP. And which is a trivial task because it's UDP encapsulated, just take Nmap and you will find them all. It's not a problem. Um, the next thing is you just need to find who's the WDS master, which is trivial again because it announces itself in layer two packets. You just listen on the interface and you get to know who's the master. And then just take your list of a, a WLCCP speaking devices, cut out the master and then you have uh, then you know where infrastructure authentication is taking place. And uh, you just have to somehow tear down this already authenticated communication, which is like, uh, uh, let's send, uh, le like the demo, Enno and Daniel just showed, like sending out faked uh, advertisements, like ARP spoofing, whatever you want to. Um, the only essential thing is you have to, you need to have access to the packets carrying all the authentication data, and, um, but that's okay. And then you just, it's some code. It's just a, a bigger bunch of code which does all the packet analyzation and the cracking, and then you get everything you need 
uh, including this context transfer key to encrypt all the other packets and of course introduce, you, introduce your own packets into the inter infrastructure. You can say like, hey, give me the pairwise master key of the following mobile node if you have a correct CT key, CTK. So um, this is why the CTK is so important. So now we will show it to you in the practical way we coded that stuff. Show it to you in just a... Yep. Just to have to restart my Pochi session. So here we go. So um, the tool is currently, we call it uh, WLCCP correct. We didn't came up with a better name until now, but um, maybe that will change, I um, don't know. So the important thing is, of course, you need to be root for that kind of attacks. And um, you just fire up the utility and um, Currently, there's debugging enabled, and it dissects you the known uh, WLCCP packet, so you can have a look into it. So I'm simulating an attack by just unplugging, unplugging the cable, which is essentially like uh, you have um, somehow spoofed the uh, WDS mask, so you have done uh, ARP uh, poisoning, or anything else. It's just it's uh, this, uh, nearly the same. Uh, just tearing down that uh, already authenticated channel. And um, from that moment the device and they recognize it, it just starts to get the authenticated channel back on. And this is what we are waiting for. Um, I hope that should be enough of time. It nearly takes about 20 to 40 seconds. So, and then that will be. So, let's see. No, that was too short, shit. So uh, you see, this is, this is the most critical part of it. Uh, you have to wait for the right time until, until this uh, authenticated connection drops down. Um, but uh, this is everything. Um, so this, uh, what we see here, I, mean, I will tell you a little bit about what you see. You see, this is, uh, ev this is data, and currently these are this, uh, Packets Daniel just crafted with his tool. What you normally see is the advertisement of the master saying, hey, I'm here, and it does include its own IP address, its own MAC address, and all that stuff. Um, this is our, this is actually the original package which Daniel took to write his tool from, uh, for crafting these packets. So, I hope now we're good again. So, cross fingers that it works. Okay, now it did work. Great. So, um, I will scroll up a little bit just to see it from the beginning. Um, if this is, these are all uh, packets. So, um, okay, this is leap response. So you see this, uh, and this here, um, you see this uh, find supplicant nonce line, this is part of the, uh, uh, the key derivation process. Here's the other nonce, and what you see here is um, uh, when we have collected all the nonces, it's just an easy computation, it's just a little bit char one and um, some HMAC, and out there falls the CTK. Um, what I, Originally wanted to sh uh, additionally showed you, but this is oh okay. This is um it showed you that it also breaks the uh, leap authentication, but um, I'm unable to show it to you right now because crawlback buffer is too short. This is um but trust me I'm I'm maybe have an no no where do you we, we can uh, we we have captured that uh, do we have the USB stick here? Okay, so um, we'll, we'll just continue. Um, if you want to see it in more detail, just uh, come over. We have uh, captured it. I can show it to you in live again. It's a, 
universally repeatable. Well, I mean, the, the crucial point is getting the CTK anyway. Yeah. Once we dispose of the CTK, um, uh, all uh, say subsequent intra-AP communication is kind of um, readable by us, which means um, once the access points between them start exchanging key material.